Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus said the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, and everything that the Father and Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through his spirit of truth, also known as the Holy Ghost, and also known as the Comforter. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the Almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in Jesus' name, because truly without him, we don't exist. We can't do nothing without the Lord. So we got to acknowledge him and give him all of the praise that's due unto his holy name. So with that being said, we're going to take a look at the scriptures as we always do. We're going to take a look at how man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God does man live. So it's, it's necessary for us to have physical sustenance. But at the end of the day, we need this spiritual food. That's coming out of the word of God. And also, too, you know, everything that we do for the most part is spiritual. So when we get attacked by Satan, we got to have his word to combat this guy. So let's take a look at this. Let's see how Jesus fought Satan. He was using the scripture. He was quoting the scriptures to him. Watch this. Luke 4. Let's get right on into this. Luke 4 and verse 1. It said, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan. And was led by the spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward in hunger. So, you know, Satan, he doesn't know our every thoughts, but he studies us. He don't know what we think. And he 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 got an idea of what you thinking because he's studying you. He watching you. But if Satan knew what was on our mind, we would be destroyed. He will make it to where. You can't serve God. So we got a choice not to let this guy in. We got to get this word in us. We in a fight and you can't win if your gas tank is empty. You ain't got no stamina. You ain't got no endurance. You ain't going to be able to win. We need this word. This word is what's going to fight off these wicked spirits. It said, verse three, and the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. So Satan, he got this tailor made temptation for each and every one of us. He was even tempting Jesus because he saw that he was hungry, hungry after he got done fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And he thinking that, you know, he wants some physical food. But let's see. Jesus was well equipped. Watch this. It said, and Jesus answered him, saying, it is written. Now, anytime you read in the Bible where it's written, you can go back and look at it, which is what we're going to do in a few. We're going to look and see what Jesus was quoting us from. He said, and Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So man just don't live by physical food, but by every word that God commanded us. Let's go back and take a look and see where he was quoting us from. Let's go to Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy 8. Let's take a look at verse 1. Let's see what he said here. Deuteronomy 8 and 1. He said, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. Wait a second. Everything that God commanded us to do, that's what we live by. We live by, or what we're supposed to live by, is the constitution of the kingdom of heaven, which is this word. He said, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. So when the Lord was testing the children of Israel out there in the wilderness, he was testing them to see whether or not they was going to be obedient unto him or not. Let's see what happened. It said, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee to know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So man is supposed to get his instructions from the Bible. From what thus said the Lord. This is what we live by. As a matter of fact, let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go over here to, uh, what is that? Since we over here, since we in Peter. Let's go and take a look and see what Peter said over here. Look. 
It said, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So didn't no man just come and sit down and write this Bible out. He was inspired by the Holy Ghost. So this word came from heaven. It said, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's how we got the word. Holy men of God spake as God was moving them. Let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go and see. We can trust this word. This word is good. Let's take a look. It said over here, all scripture, this is 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Everything that's written in this Bible was inspired by God. All the events that took place, all of the prophecies, so on and so forth, it was inspired by God. It said all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine. So you want to believe in God? This is what you got to look at for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So it's telling us this is this is molding us into what God wants us to be. The scriptures. That's why we need this word. It said that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So you'll be perfect when you start applying this information that's in the Bible to your life. Let's go and look at something else. First Timothy six, since we over here. First Timothy six. Let's see, because this life is indeed a fight. And let's see what happened over here with, with uh, uh, Paul. What was he telling Timothy and to us as well? Let's see what he was saying. Let's start at verse first uh, Timothy six. Let's start at verse seven. So he was letting the people know, you know, stay away from uh, uh, vain doctrine. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, which is the word of God, even to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine, which is according to the godliness or according to godliness. It said he is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy, strife, railings and surmisings. So if somebody is not living by what thus said the Lord, they out of order. Simple as that. Verse seven now. It said, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. So if people that get too caught up in this world, you will, you came in here naked and alone and you're going to leave here naked and alone. He said, and having food and raiment, let us there, let us be there with content. Be content with having food and clothes. And many of us have much more than this. We got food, clothes, a building, a car, cars all kind of stuff the lord is fulfilling our needs above and beyond what we can act think and even imagine i ask him for don't let satan make you discontent because that's one of satan's goals he wants you to always focus on what you don't have as opposed to what god is blessing you with stop focusing on what you don't have when you look around you'll truly see that you blessed and you rich because you got god so look it said but they that will be rich Fall into a temptation and a snare. So you looking to be rich because that's what the world promote. Oh, be rich, man. Get a lot of money, this and that. But at the end of the day, you get a lot of money and you die. You're going to leave it to somebody else. You can't do nothing with it. It said, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And it's a many foolish and hurtful lust. So when you got a lot of money, you get into a lot of pro a lot of trouble. A lot of problems arise. It said, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. So when a person loves money, that's the root of all evil, it said. Because people will do some, hate, commit some heinous crimes for some money. Some people even kill their mother and their father for some money. Are you kidding me? Wow. It said, which while some coveted after. They have erred from the faith. So at one point, some people was in the faith dealing with what thus said the Lord. Then they started covering after money, wanting more and more money. They walked away from the word of God. Let me let you know this right now, people. Ain't nothing more valuable than the word of God. Nothing. When you got God, you got everything. That's why he told you, seek him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto thee. Matter of fact, let me just let me just show you this. Let me show you because anything that I quote, I, I just want to. If I'm able to get to it, I want to go ahead and sh put this on the camera so that you all can see, because far too often we didn't been deceived. 
We gotta stop being deceived. We gotta read for ourselves. Watch this. Matthew 6 and 33. He said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Whatever you need when you're seeking God, he's gonna give you everything. Everything that you need. Remember that. All you gotta do is ask him. Just ask him. Go and ask him. Be obedient. Start keeping God's laws. Start being obedient unto him. He'll give you your, what you're looking for. If it's according to his will. So he said, they err from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So them people got in trouble. They was they was thinking that they was going to get the easy way out, but they really just multiplied their troubles unto themselves. But what are we supposed to do? The man of God. Because this right here, we don't live by material things and food. We live by everything that God told us. Watch this. It said, but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. That's what we supposed to be following after these characteristics right here. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. One, two, thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. So this is our job right here. The word of God. Everything else is secondary. Let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go and look at uh, 1 Samuel 17. Because man lives by the word of God and the faith that we have in God. And what we're about to go and take a look at over here now is when uh, uh, David slew Goliath. And what he had was faith because David was much shorter and much smaller in stature than uh, uh, Goliath, which was probably well over nine feet tall. This guy was a giant. So let's take a look at this. We're going to see how this giant got knocked off because he was defying God and his army. So now let's take a look at this. We're going to look at this great warrior. David knocked this guy off. So let's look. First Samuel 17. Let's read. Uh, let's read one down to 10 because this is an awesome story right here. This is an awesome event that take place that took place. It's not just a story. This is something that actually happened. So it said now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. And were gathered together at Shako, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shako and Azekah, and Ephsedamim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. So here we see that the children of Israel is going to fight against the Philistines, and the Philistines got a champion among them. And this guy, he is a giant. Let's see. On the outside, it looked like he can beat up anybody. But remember, the fight that we be fighting is spiritual. The way that we combat what's going on is through the word of God. Let's take a look at this. It said, and the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. So they split up. It said, and there, were, and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits in a span. So this guy was tall, over nine feet tall. It said, and he had a helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass, heavy stuff. He got some heavy armor on. To the physical eye, I mean, the carnal man, he looking like, man, I can't beat this guy. But this fight right here is going to be fought on a spiritual plane. Although this guy's coming with you know, weapons and armor and all of this stuff. David going to slay this guy by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of God. But let's take a look. It said, and he had an helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. So this guy's fully armored, right? Let's see. It said, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear had weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. So so this Philistine, uh, uh, Goliath, he talking real crazy. He said, man, what y'all doing coming to fight me? Man, look, go and get you somebody that's going to fight with me. Yeah, you asking for the right thing because David about to come and peel his head. Take his head right off his shoulders, as a matter of fact. Verse 9. He said, if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, 
We will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. So he was talking crazy about the armies of God. Let's see. He said he defied them, right? All right. Let's see what else he said. Verse 32. Let's see. So we we, we just fast forward and we're going to see David come and take this man's head right off his shoulders. Watch this. It said, and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. So in other words, don't be afraid of him. No, ain't, don't nobody in the camp of Israel be afraid of this guy. Let's see why. He said, thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. David said, I go and handle that business for you. He said, and Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. But thou art but a youth and he a man of war from his youth. So Saul, he didn't really understand the faith that, that David had in, in, in taking care of the Lord's business, killing this guy. So he said, man, David. You, you ain't nothing but a kid. And he been fighting since he was a kid. So, you know, this is a side note. Don't let nobody discourage you from off of what God got for you to do. Because ain't nobody going to understand what God got for you. Because that's for you. You do what God told you to do. Don't let nobody discourage you and take you off your path, okay? Because David didn't do that. But watch this. It said, and David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. So a lion and a bear came and took a lamb uh, uh, out of the flock of uh, uh, David's sheep, right? Let's see. It said, and I went out after him. So David went and chased the lion and the bear. Let's see what he did. And smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. He said, man, I killed that lion when he rose up against me and the bear, too. Look at what else he said. Thirty six. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he have defied the armies of the living God. He said, man, this guy, he going to go down just like that lion and that bear that I killed. That's some faith right there. David had faith in the God of Israel, the same God that we serve. He had faith in that. Watch this. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion. Who was it that delivered him? It wasn't himself. David wasn't bragging on himself. He said the Lord that delivered him. That's why I love reading about David, because David, he always giving praise and honor to the Lord. He never takes credit for nothing that he does. Never. He was always praising the Lord. So he said the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. So now let's go and take a look and see what happened now. Let's skip down to verse, uh, let's read 42. Let's see. Let's skip down to 42. I turned too fast. I'm sorry. Let's go back here. It said, and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. So he was like, man, who is this guy? He said, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. So David was a young, handsome looking young man. It said, and the Philistine said unto David, am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods, which were false gods. So let's see what happened. So let's continue. It said, and the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air. And to the beast of the field. He talk, he real confident in what he think going to happen. Not knowing his head is about to be off his shoulders in, in just a little while. Watch. Then said David to the Philistine. Thou comest to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield. But let's see what who David came to him. In. See, the word of God is powerful. It's sharper than any two edged sword. That's what Hebrews 4 and 12 let us know. The word of God is alive and it's powerful. So man don't live by physical things only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God that man live. Watch this. He said, then said David to, Phil to, the, to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. He said, man, I'm about to smite you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Let's see, he said, this day will the Lord deliver me thee into mine hand. 
Let me read that one more time because I read that too fast. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand and I will smite thee and take thine head from off thee or from thee and will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. So David was proving his faith in God. He was proving his faith. He said, man, you telling me that I'm going to get ate up by the fowls of the air. I'm going to give your body and the body of the Philistines to the fowls of the air. You're going to see that the Lord is real today. He said, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. So remember this family. We fighting a spiritual battle. And you know who, need, who we need to help us? God. We are fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places, as the scriptures let us know over in Ephesians 6. We are fighting against Satan and his allies. How we fighting this fight? Through the word. So let's see. It said, And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted. And ran toward the army to meet the Philistines. So he wasn't, he wasn't shuffling around. He was running toward this guy. Like, come, on, let's get it on. Yeah, he was talking all that stuff. Watch this. Let's see what happened. It said, and David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. That the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with the sling and with the stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. You know why? Because God had get, given David the battle. Man don't live by bread alone or physical things either. But by every word of God, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God doth man live. It said, therefore, David ran and stood upon the Philistine. And took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. So David hit this man in a forehead with a stone. And then when he fell forward, David took his sword and chopped his head off. This was a he, David became a national hero at this time right here. It said. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Of course, because David came in the power of the Lord and slew that man. Look, any enemies we got, go to the Lord. Let's go and take a look at something else. Since we over here in Samuel, let's go over here. Because man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God doth man live. We don't live by only physical uh, and material possessions. We live by the instructions that God told us. That's how we make our way prosperous. Let's look at this. 2 Samuel 22. Let's see what 31 say. It said, as for God, and this is, this is David over here saying this. It said, as for God, his way is perfect. You can also find this in uh, Psalms 18. Psalms 18 and I believe 30 through 32 somewhere over there. But it said, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. God going to hold you up when you trust in him. Got to trust in his word. It said, for who is a God save the Lord? Or who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? God is my strength and power. And he maketh my way perfect. Whoa, whoa. I don't know why I don't have this highlighted, but I got to make sure I come back and look at this. He said, God is my strength and my power. And he maketh my way perfect. It's God that do this. It's him. We ain't nothing without him. It said, he maketh my feet like hinds feet. So he fasts and setteth me upon my high places. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. God is the one. If any of us know how to fight, it's him that taught us how to fight. It's him. He didn't show us how to get down in combat because, you know, let's face it. There might come a time when you might need some of those skills. And it's never for offenses, but always for defense. That's why I pray to God I never have to do nothing or lay hands on nobody and get physical because I don't want to never hurt nobody. I love the people. Even when people be talking crazy, man, just go and get out of here. You don't know what you're doing. You can get yourself hurt. All right? Because God, he'll, te he'll, te he'll teach you some stuff. He'll teach you some stuff. and You, 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 you never want to be 
on the offense. But let's go and take a look at this. Let's go and look at this. Let's wrap this up. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Because man don't live by bread alone. We put our trust in the Lord. He our trust. Matter of fact, we're going to see over here. He our refuge. Watch this. When we in trouble, we got to run to him. Don't come up out of that. Look at this. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. God's name is a strong tower. It's like a safety. It's a shelter. We run to it. We safe. Why? Because God is protecting us. He defending us. Why is that? Because we put his trust. We put our trust in his word. That's why. All right. Let's go and look at something else. One last place. Psalms 119. If it was good enough for David, it's good enough for us too. Let's take a look. Look at what he says. Psalms 119, 49. Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. God is a God of all hope, like the scriptures say over in Romans 15 and 13. So we should never lack hope because God's word is what's sparking that hope in us. Got to have faith. He said, remember the word unto thy servant, which upon thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction for thy word have quickened me. Thy word have made me alive. So when we going through it, God's word is our comfort whenever we going through it. So just remember that. So with that being said, may the spirit of God rest upon each and every one of us. May he bless us and give us a heart to serve him perfectly according to his will so that we can do that, which is pleasing in this sight and so that we can get eternal life. One day after this is all over with. So once again, praise the Lord for his knowledge and wisdom and understanding that he's given us. I love you all so much. Peace in Jesus name.